Hi everyone, my name is Michelle White and this is my tutorial on the calendar application. Now we are going to break up this tutorial into two sections. Um, today's sort of walkthrough is just going to mainly be how do we create calendars, um, as you can see sort of on the left side here, how do we create groups, when, it, when do we know to use groups, when do we know not to use them, um, how do I create sort of daily events or repeating events. The second tutorial will be more of a deeper dive into taking these events and really applying them to the layout and how do you stylize them, how do you sort of get them to you know, look exactly how you want them on the front end. Um, also to you guys, there will be some other sort of um, walkthroughs on integrations. Um, just so everyone's sort of on the same page here, if you are watching this for the very first time or you are an existing client, um, some of you may be on an application called the schedule. Now about a year back or whatnot, uh, actually a little bit longer than that, um, this is the application we used to run full time and we decided that we needed to give it sort of a facelift. So we came out with what we call the calendar application. Um, so depending on if you guys do have integrations, you may be on one or the other. Um, we are currently still sort of moving those integrations over into the calendar application. But um, today, you guys, we're not really going to talk about the integrations. I just kind of wanted to mention that. We're truly going to focus on somebody coming in here and manually putting the events in. As you guys can see, I do have a couple sort of calendars or sort of events sort of displaying here. Um, as a default, you are going to be set to what we call the monthly view. Uh, if you do click on the top part here, you can sort of jump right to that particular month. So that's just like a little trick there. Otherwise, I can navigate on the top here by the arrows, kind of sliding in all the way into January of next year, February, and, and so on. Um, also to you guys on the right side, we do have the month view, so like I said, that is the default view that you do get. Um, otherwise, you can click on week view, and then you can click on day view. So there's a couple options, of course, um, for you guys to sort of toggle on that view. Um, it always kind of comes down to sort of what, what fits your needs or what look um, helps you sort of see all these events. So as I said to you guys on the left side here, um, I do just have a couple test ones here. Um, I am going to show you this test YMCA. Um, so this is an example of what it would look like if an integration came through the calendar. Uh, big, really big difference, guys, are how do you tell which one is, you know, an integration and which one did you manually put in. Um, the big thing here is you can see this lock. The lock is really a good just visual or a good indication letting you know that this particular calendar has coming from a different source. Uh, maybe it's Google Calendar, maybe it's Outlook, EMS. Um, there's a millions out there that you know we can sort of pull from, but that's just sort of a nice little indication. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. All right, so let's go ahead and start from scratch just so you guys can see the complete setup. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new calendar. So to do that, you guys, there is a settings icon right here which says Manage Calendar, and we'll go ahead and select that. Now, again, you guys, as I said, I've already started with a couple here um, just so I could sort of show you what that end result sort of looks like. But today we're going to create a brand new one. So how we do that is we're actually going to hit the plus sign or plus symbol right here, and then we'll give our calendar a name. So I'm just going to call it Demo. Um, again, just for this particular tutorial. And now you could put a description in here. Completely up to you. Know that the description itself will never be on like the front end. And when I say front end, I'm, I'm really referring to the digital signage or your iPad or your touch screen. Um, this information is strictly for you. So if you guys have a couple calendars that are really, really similar, and you know sometimes it's hard to tell which one's which, you could definitely just put a description in here uh, that would help you sort of you know separate them apart. Color, of course, that is important. Um, you guys can click right in here too if you want, to sort of use our color picker. Otherwise, you can see too, we just have some default colors. Um, really, it's just a nice, easy way to quickly grab one and sort of continue on with the setup. Uh, of course, local time zone is gonna be an important one as well. So we are actually central time, but as you can see, we, we do have you know a lot of different options here. Um, and then of course, we have different templates. So a majority of you guys are going to use the default template which gives you these field names. Um, again, these field names are gonna come really more important when we're taking our calendar and, and putting it on the digital signage. Um, we'll kind of go in more in depth on that. But for the most part, you guys, you guys are gonna be that default setting. Otherwise, there is rink. Uh, that is another popular one here. Uh, any um, ice rinks or ice arenas, 
really when people are using sort of uh, that particular schedule, this is really important for them. And then we do have name, description, and location, which is exactly the same thing as a default. So I think that's just a little bug there. But uh, yeah, there should just be two right here that we're going to kind of focus on. So I have my default, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Create now. All right, you guys, so as you can see, the demo went up to the top right here. Um, obviously, I don't have any events yet because we haven't put them in. So we can go ahead and get started now with that particular part. So it is sort of grayed out with a blue uh, bolded sort of uh, number here to sort of help indicate that today is the 18th. So if I was going to put an event today, um, I simply just click right on here and then sort of this little pop up sort of displays. So obviously um, it's adding. So when the date is, it's kind of giving you that verification here. Um, and then important thing that a lot of people do sort of forget is that when you have multiple calendars on the left side and you're about to enter an event in, it's really important that you sort of tell the CMS what calendar are we tackling. Um, again, a lot of people do sort of forget that and kind of you know dig right in there. Um, so kind of keep in mind that you always want to start with that part when you're in this sort of, um, they call it a modal. So we're going to do our demo here. And then we have name and description. So um, for name, let's just do, this is my demo title. So maybe this would be a title, um, you know, if you're a fitness place, maybe it's, it says yoga or it says um, rowing or spin class. You know, maybe you're at college, maybe it says, you know, students information or, you know, with the holidays coming up, maybe you have a, you know, a holiday information, you know, Christmas party. Um, so whatever title would be sort of established there and then a description of that particular event. So uh, for this, again, just for this tutorial, I'll just say description will go here. I know, I know, very clever. Um, just my little OCD right there, we'll kind of capitalize the D. Now, if I hit create right now, which I'm going to, what's going to happen is that this particular event is going to run all day. So that's sort of a quick way to, you know, Add an event, add a location, and just quickly hit create. Um, as a default, that's going to establish that you're going to run that all day. Now let's just sort of take this to another level. Um, let's say we have an event, and it's every Tuesday. And it's every Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, for our scenario, let's just say it's a meeting. So to kind of add more sort of um, elements or more features to this, um, I'm going to click on the 19th. And now I'm going to go to more details, which just opens up sort of a different modal. Again, that's just kind of a development developer terminology there. Um, it does open up sort of a different modal here. And you can see as a default, it was set to all day. And I did, I did just kind of uncollect that. Um, but if I hit repeat, now even more and more settings come in. So if you guys are sort of familiar with Google Calendar, uh, this is really a good indication um, that it's sort of like the same setup, you know, as far as like the terminology here. So it will be very easy for you to add events, but we're going to go ahead and sort of tackle some of this so you, you know, truly understand um, all the features. So to go back to our scenario, again, we have a meeting and it's every Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So the first thing I want to do is obviously change the time, right? And so I can scroll up here to 9 a.m. Or again, I can just come in here and type in the actual time. It, it's completely up to you. It's kind of whatever fits your sort of needs here. Uh, just make sure that you're truly establishing, you know, the nine and changing that AM here. So here we go. Um, yep, it is on the Tuesday. I'm gonna have it repeat. Now I'm gonna have it repeat weekly. Okay, I'm just kind of going back to my scenario there. It's it's every Tuesday. Um, it's every week. You know, maybe it's if it was every three weeks. You know, I could sort of establish or change that here. Um, if I do have an end date, you know, maybe this is something that's only, it's only a meeting that's going to be six months long. Um, I could do the occurrence. So again, I can do sort of the math there. If I say six months, I can sort of calculate how many weeks that may be. Um, otherwise, I can just go ahead and tackle right by that sort of month and say, okay, six months out. Okay, yep, we're done on the 31st. You know, so for this, again, scenario, I'm just going to do the no end date, but know that these two options are available. Um, we do get this nice summary as well. So as you're sort of kind of clicking around here and you, you're like, ah, oh, okay, do I, do I have it right? Um, this summary will sort of help you establish that, you know, you've, you've selected the right things here. And it's sort of just giving you that indication like, hey, you know what, you're, you're going to put this meeting every Tuesday. Is that how you want it? Um, again, you guys, that calendar part, I kind of told you most people sort of miss. We do want to make sure that we are grabbing the right calendar. And then again, let's just, you know, fill out our titles here. So let's just do demo meeting. Um, let's discuss, let's see here, all the demos we need to talk about. All right, that's a terrible, terrible description, but 
<laughs> I'd still roll on with it. And then the location, let's just say, you know, in the conference room. So you see I filled this out. Now, you guys keep in mind too, you don't have to fill out every single field. Um, you know, maybe location's not a big thing for you. Don't, don't feel like you have to put that in there. Um, it, it's completely up to you, but know it's available if you want it. So let's go ahead and hit create now. So as you can see, you guys did create that event. It is every Tuesday and I sort of scroll through my month view here. Um, and as you can sort of see, it's, it's continuing to go. So to kind of add on to my scenario here, where we have this meeting, um, let's say there is a situation where you're like, oh man, you know what, tomorrow for whatever reason, I have a dentist appointment, you know, 9 a.m., it's, it's just not gonna work. I've gotta change it to 10 a.m. So super easy how to edit these particular events. Um, you simply just click right in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force you guys to sort of just go straight into more details because it sort of brings you into sort of this model, um, especially when you're dealing with like repeating a monthly and yearly, there might be something, you know, within here that you just need to change or the time. So I always just kind of tell people to hit that more detail. Um, and again, so I have a dentist appointment, you know, for whatever reason, I can't do this meeting until 10 a.m. Um, my team is obviously good to go. They're, they're fine with that time. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Now, the big thing, you guys, is are we modifying the series or are we modifying just this instance? So the series is obviously, this guy is repeating every Tuesday. So, you know, next week, do I want it to always be at 10 o'clock now, or am I going back to the 9 a.m.? Um, if that's the case, well, it is the case, then we want to modify the instance, because it's only this week that I had that appointment. You know, all the other weeks um, were completely fine at that 9 a.m. So you will want to make sure that you choose which one. Now, what's nice about the system is that if you don't select one and you hit update, it actually won't allow you to continue on until you've sort of picked, you know, what direction we're going to go. Um, and it does give you a warning too, just kind of like a, hey, heads up, like we've got this thing repeating. Um, are you sure you're changing this time, you know, full, full time? Which in, again, in our scenario, we're just going to modify this one instant and then I'm going to hit update. And as you can see too, it did change right off the bat to 10 a.m. here. And then all, um, all my other events here are still at that 9 a.m. because I've only obviously tackled that one instant. So to give you kind of a more understanding too, let's kind of go back to more details, just kind of tackle some of this stuff here. Um, so you guys did see I can, didn't, I can do it daily. Um, I can do it all day if I want. I just obviously simply click all day or if it's all day, um, obviously I can designate that, that particular time or I shouldn't say all day, but I, if it's just that day, I can tackle that particular time. Apologize for that little uh, mess up there. Um, otherwise, you guys saw me do the weekly. Obviously, there is a monthly too. So maybe if this event is every month, do you always want it on the 20th of the month or do you always want it on the first of the month? You know, do you even want to take it to that point where it's every first of the Sunday? Maybe you don't really care about the day itself. Um, so you can see how you can sort of really, really get these events to, to repeat um, or not even that, but just really crank out a year's worth of information in really just one day. Um, and then of course you guys too, we do have the yearly uh, flexibility as well. So that's kind of the quick run, run through of the event. Um, once you get your events in, so let me just kind of show you sort of some of my events here. Um, this is sort of my crazy workout schedule. Um, so as you do get more events in, you can sort of see, you know, how it sort of fills in or whatnot. So the next step here is to sort of ask yourself um, if you want to create a group of calendars or if you want to have the individual calendars just be displayed. So let's kind of break that down, kind of what I'm saying here. Um, to kind of go back to my fitness scenario, let's say that you have a calendar that is, you know, it's just a yoga uh, calendar. You have just a spin class. Um, you have a rowing. And let's just say you have a bar. So you have four individual calendars that are just for those particular classes. And maybe, depending on where your screen is or your iPad, um, your touch screen, maybe you want to take all those individual calendars and just group them together. So that would be sort of a scenario where you want to create a group. Now, to do that, you'll hit this Manage Group setting here, and you'll see that this pop-up shows up. And you'll go ahead and just create the group right here. So I just hit that blue button called Group, and then you give it a name. Um, another way to sort of explain a group is, you know, maybe think of it as like you have a folder and you're adding all these individual calendars into that folder. Now, again, you guys, you don't have to do it this way. Um, every client's a little bit different. So you have, you know, you will definitely have the 
um, access to just, you know, assign just that yoga class to just that screen or just that rowing to this, just that screen. However, again, maybe your scenario is different where you're like, no, you know what, our screen is like right in the main area, like right when people walk in, it makes sense for me to sort of bundle all these calendars into a group. So once you've sort of decide what route you want to go, um, if you do go the group, go the group route, um, as you guys did see, I just clicked on create group. We'll give this a group name. So I'm going to be really clever and just call it group name. And then you can just slide all of these, or maybe you're choosing between one or two, um, one of these calendars over. As you can see, they came over here. And then you just want to sort of establish how many rows. Now, rows is basically how many recent events do you want it to display? So again, let's just kind of back up. Let's give that a scenario. Um, we're that workout place again, and this, this particular calendar is a yoga class. Well, geez, I've got a hundred, you know, yoga classes all day. Do you want all a hundred to sort of display? You, you probably don't. You probably want the most, you know, the most recent 10 or the most recent 20. Um, and so that's kind of what this is saying. So most people as a default, they probably do about 10 to 20. Um, and again, it kind of varies based on how many calendars you do have. I'm not too sure why I did 20 there. Um, but as a default, that's kind of where we sort of start. Know that we can always customize this. We can always make the changes to it. Um, but just to kind of help navigate, to help you kind of get going, that's what I would recommend. So again, once we sort of establish that name, we've sort of slid over these individual, individual calendars, um, all I need to do now is just hit Create. And it will sort of show up on the left side here. So again, what's nice, you guys, is you can view them by individual calendars as you're sort of seeing what I'm doing. Otherwise, you can just select the main group. It sort of buckets, buckets them all together, and then it just displays. So that's sort of the kind of the quick overview of how to get these events in, how to repeat them. Um, like I said, you guys, there is going to be another tutorial on how to take these events and bring them into the front end or bring them into the layout editor, um, sort of using our app to stylize it. And then there are other tutorials on our integrations. So if you guys have any questions, definitely give us a call or email our support team. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.